Academy and Oscar. Yeah. Hey. Give it up for Ryan Rogers. Yeah. Keep it going. Thank you, Ryan. Appreciate that. All right, here we go. Here we go. All right. It's great everybody came out here this evening. Appreciate it. Good to see everybody here tonight. A little bit about myself. I am Oscar. I am a half breed. That's right. I'm half Indian and Jewish. <laughs> Had a rough childhood. I was circumcised with a tomahawk. Yeah. My rabbi, my rabbi smoked a peace pipe. My cannery played the Tom Toms. We were only driving a valley to set up smoked salmon signals. <laughs> Actually, folks, not a lie to you. Which just shows you can't trust Jewish Indians. I'm German and Irish, which makes me a dyslexic drunk. <laughs> I don't know whether to fight for a drink or drink and fight. <laughs> but I'm a lover, not a fighter. And to prove it, I raised five girls. Five girls! Thank you! Three daughters and two wives. <laughs> hey, I'm not Mormon, but I spent over 20 years in Vegas. I gotta tell you, Vegas is a tough town. Oh, man, it's rough. Between the hookers and strippers and pimps, oh my. There's a lot of road kill on a yellow brick road. Ask Siegfried and Roy. Nothing worse than squash cowardly lions. Well, maybe the only thing worse than that would be two gay guys square dancing. I find it repulsive myself, actually, but people ask me if I gamble. Hey, folks, how you doing over there? Hey, gay. Yo, you guys. Hey, hey. You guys, how you doing over there? Did they charge them to get in here? <laughs> All right, they don't care. I hope they did, damn it. All right, well, with an introduction like mine, you know, you've seen them on national TVs from Vegas. I know you're all thinking, you've seen me on Most Wanted. <laughs> but people ask me if I gambled, you know, only in wedding chapels and on real estate. I was unlucky in love, I lost both the house and the ranch. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm so unlucky I could fall into a barrel of tits and come out sucking my thumb. <laughs> in fact, I am so unlucky. I got a free drink in Vegas. It only cost me $700. A month for 18 years. I was so depressed after the second divorce, I caused suicide prevention. They put me on hold. So unlucky I am, really. I'm so unlucky on payday I can fall in a room full of drunken hookers and come out with blue balls. It's not easy, I'm telling you, it's not easy. Hey, what a crowd, what a crowd. Here we go, here we go. It's great to be out here tonight. Silence, okay, thank you. I appreciate that. All right, all right. Don't be the only one to clap. Don't think you're a or you're a fish. Oh, I don't know, I don't know. I thought I had a perfect marriage. I really did. And then one day, one day she said in her southern bell draw, why don't you write some ex-wife jokes? Huh? I didn't know what she meant, but it didn't take long to figure it out because about a week later she comes driving up in a big old truck. Starts loading everything up. She goes, well, aren't you going to help? I said, hey, that truck says... We haul? No, no, this is you haul. You haul it out of here. I ain't getting that shit. What are you, crazy? Oh, she's loading up and she's whining. You do nothing, I sweat like a dog. Oh, yeah, well, now you know I felt like in a bedroom. Oh, yeah, because like a dog, I'd roll over a bank. She'd tell me to roll over and play dead. All I wanted to do was bury a bone. I was up there to lick my wound. So why would I help? I lost three tax write-offs that day. <laughs> Yeah, I had a divorce just to get half my stuff back. <laughs> oh, don't get upset, ladies. I know what you're thinking. I know what you're thinking. I'm a bad guy. But she was warned. Her mother warned her, damn it. That's right. Kind of love to get in in her conversation over there. <laughs> All right, okay. So anyways, after the first divorce, I didn't know what to do. So I went to a shrink. I was really upset. Maybe some of you have tried a marriage counselor. Don't even bother doing that. Mine charged me a hundred bucks an hour and told me to get over to wife, I should watch porno movies. Watch pornos? For a hundred bucks an hour, I could have had a hooker. What are you talking about, watch pornos, for God's sakes? So there I am, watching pornos, trying to figure out what's going to happen next. So then what happened? She told me, she goes, get over me, find somebody else. So I did. And then what happens? When you find somebody else, they want you back. 
Why do women want you back if you find somebody else? They want you back. Back to being miserable. That's what it all is. So I go back to the shrink. I said, I don't know what to do. You know, but I'm having a great time with the both of them. She says, this is your problem. You're a sex addict. I'm a sex addict, but it's your fault. You're the one who told me to watch pornos, for God's sakes. For a hundred bucks an hour, I could have had a hooker. I could have been cured. It's legal in Nevada. That's right. Could have deducted her off my taxes as a medical expense. <laughs> Deduct my addictions. That's a ticket. All right, all right. What a crowd, what a crowd. Here we go, here we go. Ex-wives, though. Now I know why, ladies. Now I know, ladies. Now I know, ladies. Ladies, now I know. <laughs> well, you got hair down there. It's a hide the hook, damn it. <laughs> Oh, yeah, and those ladies not laughing over there, we now know who shaved, damn it. That's right, fellas. We got Baldy Beavers right over there. All right, don't blame me. I'm an asshole, but at least I admit that I'm an asshole. It's the assholes of the world that can't admit that they're assholes and they're screwing everything up. So now's your chance to get even with every asshole that's cut you off in the freeway, jumped your parking spot at the mall, or had more than 12 items in the express lane and then stopped to write a check, because that asshole is me. So on three, right now, I encourage you, let me know what an asshole I am. One, two, three. Thank you. Now you know how to play the game. I'll give you a name. Let me know if they're an asshole. Osama bin Laden. Asshole. Saddam Hussein. Asshole. The person next to you not yelling asshole. Asshole. <laughs> oh, quickly we quiet down. But on behalf of us assholes, and we know who we are, I do want to thank the quietest ones in the room, because now we know where our hemorrhoids are. <laughs> Don't be offended if you're in hemorrhoids. Some of the greatest people in the world were ass scratchers. King George of England. Who was this pain in the ass? King George of England. Any history majors in here? Little yellow bus stop outside? George Washington, for God's sakes. That was his pain in the ass. For example, Bill Clinton. Who was his pains in the ass? He had a rash of hemorrhoids, right? Paula, Monica, Jennifer, Hillary. And who were Hillary's? Monica, Paula, Jennifer, Bill. It just goes to show you, one person's asshole can be another person's hemorrhoid. So if you think someone's a total asshole, you just might be their hemorrhoid. <laughs> All right, folks. Don't go crazy. Quick impression right now for you. My impression of... Not that one. My impression of Mike Tyson. <laughs> okay, Mike Tyson. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Mike Tyson in a play. Friends, woman, cut to me, let me win. Okay, Mike Tyson at the aftercast party, at the party after the play. Can you imagine Mike Tyson and Jeffrey Dahmer in jail at the same time? Talk about a feeding frenzy. What kind of a food fight would that be? Which leads me to ask the question, do cannibals serve pygmies as cocktail weenies? I don't know. Maybe gay midgets as fruit cocktails. I don't know. French tourists or d'oeuvres. But you'll never see a bulimic cannibal. You know why? Because once they get their finger in their mouth, boop, it's all over. It's like spontaneous combustion with those people. What the hell happened to them? I don't know. Where'd Charlie go? Oh, that's how my told me. His foot in his mouth is head up his ass. <laughs> Nothing left but teeth and lips. <laughs> all right. It's not nice to pick on cannibals. They're just like us. They just want a little head on their beer. <laughs> A little bear on her head. Has she ever done that for you? I hear it's quite refreshing. All right. Maybe Martha Stewart will end up in jail with Hannibal Lecter. They'll write a cookbook. Yeah, cannibal cooking. How to dress up your fruit and vegetables and the art of making finger sandwiches. I know what you're thinking. How does this asshole come up with this shit? My shrink couldn't figure me out. Said so I drove her to the edge. And then she jumped. Honest, I didn't push her. She was an educated woman. She should have known better. Drive off the edge of the road. Then the insurance companies pay you a double indemnity for accidental death. That's the way you commit suicide. All right, I guess I pushed the envelope a little bit. So I'm just going to another quick impression. Twiggy. <laughs> Twiggy's grandmother. Twiggy's little brother. Woody. Ron Jeremy. Ron Jeremy on Viagra. Ron Jeremy on Elton John. <laughs> hey, it's not nice to pick on gay people. Why that with gay people? Why that with gay people up to here? 